I teamed up with ProGB climber Alex Waterhouse to delve into the question of height and to cover some foundational climbing techniques designed to help you maximise your reach on the wall. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here with a very special guest, I'm here with Alex Waterhouse and we are here at the Climbing Hangar in Sheffield to talk you through some ways to maximise your reach as a climber. So Alex and I are both on the shorter side. Yeah, I'd say so. I am 5'5". Five, five. Yeah, I'm 5'6", I'm five, perhaps 5'7". Five, perhaps 5'7 on, really on a tall day. When I was growing up climbing, I, I started climbing when I was like 12 or whatever, but I was tiny. Really, really small. Right. And like, I think in the last sort of 10 years or so, boulders have got a lot more inclusive and mm. there are a lot more options for climbing stuff if you're a bit shorter. When I started climbing, that was not the case. Stuff was far apart. Like, right. there were things that didn't make sense. So. I had to learn all of these like little techniques that would just get me that little extra bit. A lot of the time it was doing some whack beater that you know, my feet were going over my head or whatever, but in, in like a general way, we can kind of distill the important techniques down into like three different things. So I think the most important things are to focus on your hips um, mm -hmm. and how you're twisting them to get an extra, extra reach on the wall. Okay. Uh, high feet. Um, okay. and being able to like pull in on your feet over the things and then adding in some dynamicism into your climbing. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily just like all points off dinos, but finding ways of flowing through moves to just extend your reach a little bit. While these are sort of aimed at shorter climbers, all of these techniques are relevant for anyone. This is basically just good climbing technique. See, it's, it's very easy to lean on when you just can't reach your feet. <laughs> oh, I'm too short, I can't do it. Yeah. There is almost certainly somebody who's shorter than you who can climb that climb. So you can either do the move better or be stronger. Um, yeah. And while there are those sometimes when it is harder to be shorter, there really are as many times when you can use that as a strength. Um, yeah. You can get into such a smaller box. There are so many positions where you feel comfortable where other people who have a lot more limb going on will find it a lot harder to get sure. in. Um, so I, I really do think it's a double-edged sword. Like it probably balances out somewhere in the middle um, and anybody can find ways around like any move pretty much. Perfect. Should we find a go? boulder? First thing we need to be thinking about when we're trying to reach as far as possible is always about the hips. That's basically the basis of, of climbing. If you're standing like straight on with a wall like this, so your hips are square. So sort of as far as you think you can reach when you're straight on, when you turn your hip in, basically your entire body like lines up with the wall better. So you should be able to reach a little bit further. So up on like a standard wall, it doesn't make too much difference, but as soon as you're like into a position where you're stuck underneath, then you can find so much extra length like down that side. So I think there's a pretty good boulder here that kind of represents that. So before we get into the bulk of the video, I wanted to have a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, which is Athletic Greens. I have been trying out AG1 by Athletic Greens for a little while and it really has just become part of my morning pre-climbing routine. So AG1 is a nutritional drink with 75 vitamins, minerals and whole food sources. It's a multivitamin, a prebiotic and a probiotic green supplement that aids in digestion, in gut health, mental clarity, recovery, general energy levels. So AG1 by Athletic Greens is great in that it is super convenient but what I really do enjoy about it also is that it encourages me to take 10 minutes out of my morning to just start my morning right and start with that element of self-care that maybe I wouldn't otherwise. So I just make myself up a scoop of AG1, shake it up, put it in my climbing bag and take it with me climbing or sip it at my desk before I start my work. If that sounds like something that you would like to try then you can tap the link in the description of this video to get a one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D3 K2 and five travel packs free with your first purchase. So now back to the climbing hangar and back to trying to maximize our reach with Alex Waterhouse. So if you were to like go straight on with your hips first and kind of try and reach it. Now try and like twist that left hip in. So if you're moving your left hand, twist your left hip in. Left hand, left hip you can kind of reach a lot further. So you almost like use the length of your left side of your body yeah. to like get that extra little bit. It's like such an important thing to be thinking about. Basically, if you feel like you're square on, then that's the, when you can be thinking about like, oh, how am I going to twist here? Like not quite getting it. Like, can you bring that hip in just a little bit more and get that extra reach? I used to do this a lot and I don't do it quite so much anymore. But like when I would start my session, um, when, it, when I was like doing my warm up boulders or whatever, I would climb boulders like really exaggerated in all the hip positions, but like even where it's not actually that useful, like find places where you can twist all the way in or
So it's like, it's not the easiest way of climbing the boulder, yeah. but it's, sometimes you'll like find that when you get into that like dropping position, you'll just like lock in and then all of a sudden you can go as far as you need to yeah. without having to urge or pull really hard. Oh yeah, perfect. Get that one in. <laughs> what happened there is because you're like, yeah. we'll go up onto the same hold. So because you're all like on this hold, when you do a drop knee and you like turn your foot all the way upside down, yeah. your like foot rolls around on the hold. So if I'm like moving around like this, like my foot is still on the hold, yeah. but it's like moving into different bits of it. So you need to set it up on the bottom so you have space to roll into the back of it where you actually want to be in the end. It's the same yeah. with heels, actually. If you like put a heel hook on here, up here, and then you were to roll all the way down, like your heel started off here, yeah. but it's like roll all the way down. So it's like when you're placing a heel that you want to do a big drop knee over, you need to place it like further up than you would otherwise, because yeah. when you finally end up on it, yeah. you're going to be Think below it. Any yeah. But you, the sort of, and the transition between it. And okay. You could probably combine this with a drill that I know Louis likes, right. which is like where you like hold over a hold. So it's the same thing, it like forces you to set up in a really solid position. Yeah. Um, so it's like, it's just good climbing. Yeah. Good climbing technique anyway. Mm -hmm. But I think it's so much more relevant if you're a little bit shorter because so often you're relying on that like extra like inch or so to get you to that final bit. And just that like twist can just get you a little bit further. So another boulder that we found is this purple here, which I think will illustrate really nicely that yeah sense of if you're going at something straight on versus if you're managing to get your hip closer into the wall to twist to give you that yeah. little bit more height. So if you go for the right one, as far as you can, reach, reach as high as you can. Oh, you're pretty much there. <laughs> right, now try it with the drop knee and see what the difference so, is. So drop the knee on this. So yeah, left knee dropped in. So much more, yeah. it's like a hand extra. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah, so with the straight on, you're like, I'm, yeah. I'm like pretty far off. Like, you also just have to pull really hard on this. Yeah. So if you're, I'm, I'm standing on the right side of this when I do that, so yeah. I can like push outwards. And then I can just like, yeah. feels like I'm pulling a lot less hard. Great. Nice. What a move. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, so to be honest, it looked like you could do that move straight on. But yeah. how much easier was it to get the distance when you were dri twisted in? Yeah. Did it feel different? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Like, yeah, I could probably fingertips over yeah. and then maybe like pull into it. Yeah. But the time that that would take yeah. versus if I could spot ahead of time that the twist was going to yeah. help me get in there quicker. So I, I, when, when you're climbing in general as well, like a lot of the time you're racing how tired you're getting to the top. So anytime you can make a move a little bit easier. Yeah. If, you make, if you make 10 moves, 5% easier, yeah. all of a sudden you're totally fresh for that last move that you've been falling off and, and not for yeah. the rest of it. That's kind of like, got to try and be as efficient as possible yeah. and kind of the basis of, of climbing hard. The next really important thing for climbing for short is trying to like really think about your feet and how you're using them and bring them as high as possible. There are a lot of disadvantages to being short, you can't reach as far. You, but there are some really big advantages as well. It means you can get into really small positions and really small boxes. So that for me means that a lot of the time I'm climbing with my feet up by my ears and that requires like pretty good hip flexibility yeah. and the ability to kind of like scrunch up. But once you've kind of learned to get your feet really high and then use them in a way like a hand, then yeah. you can reach so much further. So let's see, let's see if we can find some like demonstration of it, but we like hop on. Nice. Like if I can get my feet up here, because I'm in this position, I'm like totally chill now. Whereas somebody who was a bit taller and less. Ooh. Oh, I've not done this, me. Oh, yeah. one minute. Oh, there might be another one here. So here you could probably leave the foot low, but for me, I'll come up yeah, into there. Nice. And then I'm just so relaxed because the foot is so close in with my like center of gravity. I'm able to just stay really relaxed. It's 
basically like bring the feet up really high and then claw in on them. It's just something I, that's like very much part of my climbing style now from yeah. growing up, climbing, being short. Yeah. <laughs> Squeeze with the hips. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, you got it. Nice. See if, you can, see if you can let go in that position. Squeeze it. Let go. Yeah. I think I'd have to Try go. Try toe on the outside. Squeeze. I could let go one. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So, if you were six foot two, that position would be horrendous. Because you're five foot five. Like, the distance yeah. between this and this means that you can just be like tucked up in a little teeny yeah. tiny box. So it's when you're climbing, trying to find those positions where your kind of body type is suited for them yeah. and not following the, the tall guy from the go before, not trying to do his beat where he uses his feet really low, sort yeah. of finding your own way. But I think that's also the really cool thing about climbing is yeah. that you can have the same boulder that people climb in totally different ways because yeah. of the different body styles and what they're really good at. So we think we found a really good boulder that demonstrates this. So this purple, kind of the natural way that you want to do this next move, Keep the foot nice and low and then just like wang over like that. So you can do that dynamically, but we found a cool beater where you can step in like this, really tuck on that foot and you relax over to there. And it's like, you can do that dynamically. A lot of people tend towards like a more static style of climbing anyway. And we'll look at some dynamic bits and where that's useful in a minute. But that's a really nice example of somewhere where just by using your body size, Nathan ain't fitting in that box, so. No. Um, we can yeah. try. Give it a go. You can try. Yeah. That's next. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah, see, like, you ain't reaching that. You could, you could jump for it for sure, but. Yeah. Chill it. You, the dip, when you brought the foot up high like that, yeah. like obviously it's quite a bunch of position, but because you're able to use your feet in like a in a small box like that, you're able yeah. to just like totally. Feels and a lot chill. more secure than especially if, say that hold that I was yeah. going to, I wasn't quite sure that I'd be able to hold. Yeah. And I wanted to go to it static. I definitely employ the high foot yeah. rather than take the risk with a jump. Exactly. So that one's a jug, so it doesn't really matter yeah. so much. Um, but if that's a harder boulder and say that's a pocket or it's slotted and you actually yeah. have to go really slowly. Like somebody who's tall could probably leave their foot really down yeah. down low and reach into that slot, but you would have to like flick for the yeah. slot and like go into a really small box, uh, yeah. or into a really small, like precise position. Yeah. Whereas when you bring the foot on, it's just really slotted. Yeah. Cool, so the, the third thing, and I think people get a little bit intimidated by this, but it's, adding a little bit of dynamicism into your climbing and like moving with a bit of a bit of oomph. Um, when people think of dynamic climbing, I think they think of like all points off dynos and jumping a long way yeah. and like there's no holds there and you have to jump in between to get there. Yes. Uh, would you say that's accurate? Yeah, I think so. And pretty much all the dynamic movement that I've covered on the channel, it has been like approaching boulders that are set as a dyno. Yeah. Uh, kind of like leaving points of contact. Yeah, that and just, sense. well, no, 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 that makes sense, and jumping really far. <laughs> yeah. So the majority of the, like, dynamic climbing that I do isn't that. It's yeah. It's just adding in, like, a little bit of a flick at the end of a move, or, like, moving through a move with momentum that probably sure. you could do statically or somebody could do statically. Yeah. But lets you get through the positions with, sure. like, much less yeah. effort. So, yeah, I, this white one is, like, a nice demonstration of it. So there's a couple of moves on here where you could probably do them statically if you wanted to. So like this move out here, I could probably like, well, oh, okay, actually I don't even think I can do that. Whereas if I like start my hips low, explode outwards and come like that, it's so much easier. And then this next move, I could probably lock really hard to this next one. I don't even, again, I don't even know if I can. Whereas if I like come out of my hips, float, I get loads of time to grab the hold. And it's all done. So it's like, it's not saying jump really far. It's saying, Think about your hips and your momentum and move through the move 
smoothly yeah. rather than trying to stop everywhere. Yeah. It's just adding that like extra little bit of like pop through that, bit, that end bit. Yeah, I feel absolutely in my climbing, maybe because I'm a little bit shorter, yeah. I am because I'm a little bit more nervous with more dynamic movement. Mm -hmm. I'm, I try to lock off and yeah. then very quickly reach the end of my reach yeah. and tire myself out in yeah. the move, trying to go for things so, rather than flowing through moves. So that's the most obvious example of where this, this could be really useful. If you're locked off on a hold and you're as far as you can go, yeah. like you ain't getting any further than that with a lock off. Yeah. If you were to take that move, and then even get close to the end bit and then urge. Yeah. Or take that even further, come all the way through and then yeah. go like that. You get so much extra reach yeah. just by like moving through with that momentum. It's yeah. like you come to here and you get stuck, but you can extend past that with a little bit of a bounce, yeah. like all the way up. So that's kind of the obvious place to start and mm -hmm. you can just build in more and more like okay. stuff from there. Same idea, we can go to the left hole rather than the, uh, sorry, the right hole. Go to the left one rather than the right one. So. Foot position in the same place. So last time we were getting a drop meter reach here. Yeah. So we can't reach that. So if you were to start down here, float through that move. Yeah. And then come up into here. Then all of a sudden you can reach that move with less effort than the static way. Yeah. So we could go to here and then bounce off that toe. Yeah. Or, so we'll try that first and then we'll try starting from really down low, floating all the way through. Okay. You see how you feel. So lock off most of the way to it, and then bounce off the right toe. Nice. Come back down. Float all the way from low. There, yeah, nice. Versus like... So if you, you just can't like... <laughs> you could get there, but it'd be way harder. Yeah, and you'd be goosed by yeah. the tiny bit. So th this is absolutely yeah. like foundational in how I climb. Like, I find a lot of the time, I just physically can't reach between stuff. I have to do some kind of flicky yeah. and range motion. And that doesn't mean that I'm like jumping to stuff and like swinging around, because the holes are just too bad to do that the majority of the time. Yeah. But basically, if you can hold the final position, you can probably get, get, get yeah. there. A really important concept when you're doing dynamic movement is to think about like the arc of your hips while you're doing it. So if you think about standing up against the wall, if you're up against the wall and then you so you start in close and then you come up, you're always falling out. So when you're like coming out from a move, you're always falling out. So what you need to focus on is to start with the hips out, do the move, you have time where the hips come in and then come back out to like come through it. So that gives you way more time than if you go up like that and you're always falling out. So this blue one kind of demonstrates it nicely. If you try and, if you put your hips really close to the wall and then jump, you're basically just jumping outwards. You're pushing your whole body out. Whereas if you start with the hips out, float them in, and then you have that like dead point where you're on the inside. So hips back, thrust the hips in, loads more time. Hips all the way out as far as you can get them and then punch them inwards. Yeah, nice. Versus. Versus if you like sit over your foot, now, ju yeah, now jump up from there. But even yeah. then you're like, you do it naturally, which is good. Is you like, you're trying to pull yourself yeah. inwards and over the foot. It's the same idea, but like, you almost like really yeah. pronounce it and get that like hip thrusty yeah. action. But it's like, so that applies basically for, for all the other moves over here. So if we go and try that white now, yeah. um, we can try some of those moves and like really focus on the hip movement as we do it. We've picked out this white boulder, which is kind of uh, quite a big step up from the blue that we just tried, thinking about hips. Uh, this is slightly steeper, so and the holds are slightly worse. So we're going to try and apply the principles we've just covered to something at project level and see, see, if we make see some how we on get it. on. Yeah. yeah. Have a few goes and see if we can learn some bits. Nice. Set that left heel a bit higher. Yeah, perfect. Come on, into your hips. Come on, punch with your hips. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. So yeah. try and do that move on its own. So like pull into that final position and then see if you can like do that move individually. Cause I think it adds quite a lot doing it from the start, especially cause you've got this like yeah, first really shoulder move. Yeah, struggling with that shoulder move. Yeah. So, 
Um, what I'm going to do is break this boulder down a little because I find the first couple of moves quite hard to get into the position where I'm trying the move out to the right hand. So what I'm going to do is climb up into it so that I can really drill in that hip movement. Um, and yeah, just try and climb it for a couple of moves, from a couple of moves in and then I can think about adding the beginning on if I'm successful. So here. So the way I think about this move is I almost like bring my hips up as far as possible, sure. drop them down and then I'm pushing off the left leg. Okay. Have a go there. Sit all the way down. Oh, a toe might work as well. It's worth having a go. So out that way. So try and build it all from the hips, none from the hand if you can. Yeah, nice. You feel that like rock back you did yeah. first and then roll in on the heel. I think that's what you're looking for. On and out, and then punch with the hips. Oh! <laughs> that was it. Breakthrough. That was it. That was a higher foot. Heel coming Sorry, slightly higher, higher up. Heel, yeah. So that I could almost use, it was mostly the heel, but I had a little bit of toe. toe so that when I like well. pushed, I could then get a tiny bit more. Nice, that that's way. cool. So let's do the move like that. Then we'll have to look at how we can link that in with the start yeah because sure. it so because we would it's a more difficult position to get into yeah i think it should be okay we'll have to just find a way of like dropping under this so we can put the heel a little okay. higher before oh no you match over here don't you i do yeah oh you could just put it low and shift. match shift nice okay game on game on cool. shuffle up high with that heel yeah perfect same again really sit on it pull the heel into your butt Come on. Try out on this move. Oh, oh. That was a little better. <laughs> that was a lot better. <sighs> so I think what happened. I didn't get the heel on right. So you got the heel on in the perfect place, but it's the same thing we talked about earlier, where you put it on up the top, yeah. and then it like rolled all the way down back into the same spot by the time you got over the heel. So you might have to just go even higher right at the top. Oh, it was so close. Push. Oh! <laughs> that was so close. There was a little close. delay, yeah. and then the push out, and I was like, yeah. oh yeah, I know what I do. Oh, that was it. That was very <laughs> close. Yes! Yes. Well, oh, okay. Right foot. Now punch for this move. Oh. The hips came out. The, the hips, hips came out. In. That was perfect. Oh, good effort. Okay. We can move on. Yeah. <laughs> Alex is like, yeah. I'm psyched. We can move on. <laughs> the thing we were talking about earlier. And now that, that move that you've just done is quite a subtle version of it. Yeah. But this one, you can really focus on like coming out yeah. and then pulling in at the hold. I'm trying to time it so yeah. that... So, so this is exactly what we talked about earlier with the high foot. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you go for that slot in a way where you're like falling outwards, you don't have very much time. So you're like going, falling out and then you have to like snatch into it. When you come out, in, you give yourself more time, you hit that dead point. Yeah. You've got loads of time, you can Go into the slot and then you should be chilling. And then in. Oh, that was really good. Go on. Oh. Yeah. oh my God, I almost missed. Yeah, you want to come from the right. So hips yeah. down and like that and then come up like this. Because when you hit it, you were spinning this way yeah. because you, you went straight up, but then it's over here. So, yeah. so you almost need to counteract that final movement. By going? By going from right, right. to left with the hips. So you're going so like from right to left and into right. The, the, this one. Oh, that, I mean, like that was great, you fumbled. Yeah, cool, I'm happy with that. Happy with that? Yeah. Good, that's massive progress on that ball though. That's really cool. Thank you. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I definitely feel like there was 
progress made, and I think that the boulders you picked really did highlight. Nice. Yeah, that, la that last one especially, I feel like, was a really good, it sort of yeah. brought in a few of the different techniques as well. Yeah, I think it was really interesting to try at the project level, because like we were saying before, when you demonstrate on boulders that are quite manageable for yeah. you, it makes total sense when you do the movement. You're like, aha, I've got it. Then when you try and apply that on max level boulders yeah. for you, it becomes a lot more subtle yeah. and smaller changes come into play. That's where it really matters. Yeah. Um, I think trying to bring those techniques in on the easier boulders, mm -hmm. that's how you kind of build up the movement base and yeah. that like, like pattern recognition and all that stuff to be able to say, to not have to think about it when you get to something at your limit. That's yeah. what the, kind of the goal is, is you can just climb, let your body do what it does Make without having without to think too much, so. Yeah, um, yeah, I still feel I have a little way to go. Yeah. But, but I, the only way you get there is by focusing <laughs> really hard on, on the moves that you yeah. find difficult, so yeah. I think that's good. And there's, there's tons more little things you can do to sort of extend your reach, but sure. I feel like we've covered a nice basis of them. But yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much for your time really today. Enjoyed. I'll leave all links to Alex's social media in the description. Make some very cool holds and some pretty cool shorts. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll leave links to those in the description of this video. Make sure you do go check him out. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.